Hey everyone. Hey everyone. Hey, hey. We're back again for another weekly hangout. It's that time of the week. Here we are. We're joined by the lovely Teela Cunningham from Every Tuesday. Welcome, Teela. Hey Tila. guys. Hi. So glad to have you with us. And I know Happy we're a little here. low on numbers in the office today, are, but let's are. give it up for Teela. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, we can see a bunch of people jumping on now. So yeah, we, Tila, we, might, um, we might wait a couple of minutes just to make sure everyone's mm -hmm. in before we kick things off. But today, yeah. I believe you're going to be teaching lettering, vectorizing lettering, specifically in Adobe Illustrator. Yes. It should awesome. be fun. We were just saying we've got a thing or two to learn as well. We're, we, we have, we're not yeah, expert letterers yeah, by yeah, any means. No, absolutely not. But I've always been a lover of Illustrator. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to just sitting here and kicking back. Awesome. Yeah, we might get a couple of cocktails, you know. Yeah, that'd be nice. There you go. Up and just enjoy the show, you know. So it won't get much work done afterwards. But. <laughs> um, can you let us know in the comments if everyone can see and hear us? That's always a good start. And if you can, let us know where you're from. I can see a bunch of you are yeah. already sharing that, which Denmark, is awesome. Portugal, South Africa, London, Lancashire, all over the place. Yes to the UK. Yes to the UK. The <laughs> Um, but yeah, greetings from Seattle. Seattle, wow. Yes. Um, by the way, Tila, there might be a bit of a delay on the comments. Um, it's okay. the nature of the platform. So I always Iceland, say to the guests, if you leave, Argentina. if you um, give a hilarious joke and you get quick. Wait for it. That's why, <laughs> wait for it. And Philadelphia. Then Got it. Cool. This is so cool. This is great. It's all over. It's brilliant. I just love it. Yeah. Thanks so much Argentina. for joining us today. It should be a fun one. Switzerland. Cool. Hey, cool. Joanna, what's up? Okay, so I think a few more people will be uh, showing up as we go, but we've got a good number of people here today. Yeah. So, um, Tila, Boston. the floor is yours. Hey, Cheryl. Take it away. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to switch my screen over right now. Oh. And first, we're going to start out in Photoshop. And I just want to talk really quick about why you want to vectorize. So when you're in Photoshop, all of your work is pixel-based. So it's made up of tiny little squares. And if you want to enlarge it, if I enlarge this E right here, I get my keyboard um, shortcuts on screen as well. So if you are on a Mac, you already know that this is the command, but if you're on a PC and you see the symbol, it means hit control instead. And you'll be able to follow along exactly. So if I scale this E up really, really big, you can see it gets really pixelated. So you can start seeing those edges right there. And that is the downfall of a pixelated or pixel-based program. It gets really, really fuzzy along the edges. And that's no good if you're creating hand lettering and it's at a smaller size and you need it larger later on. So vectorizing is really amazing because we're able to, if I jump into Illustrator right here and I have the same exact E and I scale it up and I zoom in really close. You can see it's nice and crisp because Illustrator is a point-based program. So these points allow you to scale indefinitely. So you have zero limits and your resolution always stays super crisp. So that is the huge advantage of vectorizing. When you vectorize your artwork, you also create an additional instance of it. So once it's on paper, that's the only way it can ever exist. Once you vectorize it, you can put it on greeting cards, posters, put it on the web. The amount of times you can reproduce it is unlimited and it stays super crisp once it's vectorized. So huge advantages to vectorizing your artwork. So we're going to get started with vectorizing some artwork I've already prepared. So this artwork right here. I love it. Here's uh, one I made earlier, Tila. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> this artwork um, was just scanned in. I've got just a regular printer scanner combo and I scanned it in at 300 DPI. It's um, just black and white. So that's really important. My recommendation is, is whenever you plan to vectorize your artwork, create it in black um, because you want the highest contrast possible between your paper color and the lettering itself. That will give you the crisper edges and it'll reproduce much better when you are vectorizing it. You'll have less cleanup work later on, which we will get to in a minute. I'm gonna close this palette. All right, so we're going to start with this one. And then you can see this one um, I created with some watercolor. Um, I've got it listed the types of tools I use for each set of lettering. And you can see that it's a little faded right here. And I did this on purpose so you can kind of see the difference between having super crisp black and then the shades of gray. And I'll show you how to fix that too. I've kind of got a little trick that I use in Photoshop for fixing this, but I wanna show you what it looks like in Illustrator first. So we're gonna get to that in a second but we're gonna start right here. So when you first vectorize, you can see if I go into outline mode, that's command Y or control Y on a PC, you can see it's just big boxes. That means these are image files. They're not vector files yet. So I'm going to exit outline mode by hitting command Y again. 
And you want to select your artwork. And then you're just going to come up here to Image Trace and click it once and hit OK. And now it's going to run their default image trace. So it's kind of rough, um, but you get a good idea of what it's going to look like once it's vectorized. You can still see it's got a big box around it. So it's still technically an image. We haven't committed our changes yet. But once we do, um, you're going to be able to see a big difference right there. So if you're happy with this, you can go ahead and expand your result, and that will vectorize it. But if you're not happy or if you want to tweak it a little bit, you're going to come up here to this little icon. And this is your image trace panel. So if I open that up move it over here. These are all the settings that you can use to adjust the trace before you commit your changes. So it, it gives you a lot of flexibility with how your artwork will look so you can reduce the amount of cleanup work you have later on. So this doesn't look like a ton of options, but if you toggle down this advanced little arrow right here, you can see there's a bunch more options that we have access to. So right here, your threshold, I'm going to kind of zoom in here so you can see what happens. Your threshold allows your letters to get thicker. And if you have areas of low contrast, um, those areas will also get darker and thicker. So it, the default is 128. So if I just toggle this up really high and just watch this lettering as it commits those changes, you can see it got a lot thicker. So I usually keep this around 150 as a default for myself, and then I'll work from there depending on what my lettering looks like. So we'll just leave that right there. All right, so your paths, your paths, um, the higher you go, the smoother your artwork gets. And if you go really high, it ends up following the contours of your original lettering. So if I come over here, I want you to see the comparison between this lettering with the marker and then this one that's got a little bit more texture. So if I come up super high, you're going to see that change. And now this follows the contours more closely to the original lettering. And if you want it smoother, you just want to reduce your paths right here. You can also see that there's a count down here of your paths and your anchors. I like keeping my anchors around 10,000 max, um, but you can definitely go higher. Just keep in mind that the higher count your anchors are, the, high, the larger the file size you will end up with. Okay, so I'm going to make this a little bit smoother. I'm going to come down to the default, which is closer to 50% right here. And then for your corners, let me get to a really good place here for you to see these. So your corners dictate where your path changes direction. Your path is basically the outline of your letter. So this area right here is your path. And then this is a corner right here because this is where your path changes direction. So we're going to look at these areas as our corners get adjusted. So I'm going to toggle that way up and that will make them much crisper. So you can see they're like little arrows right there. But if I reduce it down, it's going to get a little bit softer. You can see they're a little more rounded right there. So that's what your corners option changes right here. So I'm gonna just kind of keep that in the middle. And then for your noise, this one we wanna look at our textured areas. So the top of this S and the side of this H. So when you have textured lettering, the lower your noise, let me reduce this all the way down so you can kind of see these areas, it gets much more detailed the lower your noise is. The higher you go, they're going to get a little bit softer. So you're going to lose a bit of that detail. So it all depends on personal preference, what you like in your lettering and what you're going for, the type of style that you're looking for. So those that's a basic overview of your settings. And you just want to make sure you check ignore white right here. I'm on the most recent version of Illustrator 2019 Creative Cloud. And when you do that, we are all set. We've got everything that we like. These are the settings that we're going to stick with. And then you can just hit expand. If you like these settings and you would like to save them later on, you can create your own preset right here, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to expand the artwork now. I'm going to zoom out. I can close this panel so you can see it really well. And you can see there's a bounding box around it. But if I go into outline mode now by hitting Command Y again or Control Y on a PC, you can see we've got an outline of everything instead of a big box. So that tells you that everything's been vectorized. If I click on something, you can see they're all grouped together right now. And we don't want them grouped together so we can edit them individually. So if I hit, let me get out of outline mode. Command Y or Control Y, and I just want to ungroup. So Command Shift G, and that will ungroup everything. So if I click out of here, now I can select different elements, but it always kind of leaves, well, most of the time it leaves that box here. Um, so you may have to delete that box if you're still getting that later on. But yeah, so this is all vectorized now. So it's looking really good. We're going to come back and clean up these letters in a minute. But first, I want to walk you through what happens when you have this artwork that's got more tones of gray in here, where it's not so contrasty like we need it to be. So I'm going to make a copy of this just so we have it over to the side. Let's come in here. Yeah. Um, we just got a question from Nick. And sure. 
guys definitely do get your questions in and hopefully Tila, you don't mind if we interject like no, no, no. As, as people ask stuff but nick actually asked do you ever use add-ons or plugins to reduce the number of uh, vector points such as vector first aid I actually do not. Um, I'm really particular about how my artwork gets displayed. And while automated tools are really great, um, I do so much cleanup and adjusting just because I'm really particular about all of my yep. points. Sure, um, sure. I, I don't use plugins for that reason. I, I use my base and then I go in and I adjust things even further. Mm -hmm. But if that's something um, that makes your work quicker and it's a look that you like, then by all means, feel free to, mm -hmm. to use plugins. I just personally don't do it for that reason. You find you burn a lot of time sort of going in and just fine tuning stuff. I've, I've found personally when I've done this kind of thing in the past, um, vectorized artwork, but it does take quite a bit of work afterwards to get the effect. It does. It does yeah, but first pass. In my mind, I always think that it's worth that extra time if you have Absolutely. the time to spend on it, yeah, especially it really with is. creating fonts um, and getting into those really fine details of your letters. I sure. I always say that it's worth it to spend yeah, that extra time yeah. for sure. Cool. Um, okay, so um, I'm just going to select this so you can kind of see the exact same process, but how it looks when we have this lighter shades right here. So I'm going to hit image trace again, hit OK. And now you can see that it's losing all of these areas of detail because it can't pick them up because the areas of contrast aren't as great right there. So even if I come over to my panel, Threshold will help us out the most because it's taking those areas of low contrast and it's thickening and darkening them up. But when we do that, it makes everything else a lot thicker. So we can get that effect, but all of our other letters get a lot thicker as well. Um, so that's kind of the downside if you bring in letters you can see, it's really crazy the higher you go. Um, yeah, I know, I kind like, of like it. It looks like an album cover. Do you want to, do you want to sell that as a texture yeah. design customer? You could totally do that if you wanted to. Um, but we're going to try something else. So I'm just going to get out of here and we're going to head into Photoshop and I'm going to show you my little trick for if this happens. If you forget to create your lettering in black first, which totally recommend always use black so you don't have to come and do this. But if you run into this situation, you created lettering that you love, but it's not dark enough. Um, this is my trick for making that happen. So you want to come over here to your adjustments panel. If you don't see this, you can get to it by going window adjustments and it'll pop open. And I love the levels adjustment. This is like magic for mm -hmm. someone that's vectorizing an illustrator. So click on your levels adjustment. This is also considered a non-destructive form of editing. There are other ways if you come up to filter, you can add it on that way, but this allows me to always come back and change my settings if I want to. It doesn't permanently apply it to my artwork. So non-destructive editing is totally the way to go. Um, if you've gotten the habit of hitting filter and then doing your adjustment before, please break it because it'll make your life so much easier if you want to make changes later on. So this little node right here is your black node. Whenever you slide it to the middle, it's going to make all of your darks darker and all of your lights lighter when you slide this white node closer to the center. So if I drag this over, you can see all of my darks are getting a lot darker, but it's not so extreme like we saw in Illustrator. This will make my whites whiter so I get nice crisp contrast between my blacks and my whites, but you can see it's also making my lighter areas up here even lighter. So I wanna keep this one closer to the right, but I'm going to up my black even more. So that's a kind of a gentle change right here, and we're gonna get a lot better result in Illustrator, but we can take this even further by adding a brightness contrast adjustment. So you wanna hit this icon now, you can see we've added a layer adjustment right here. So we can always come back to it if we want. Now that we're going to add a brightness contrast, all you have to do is double click right here, and I'm, I've got my settings right here that I can change later if I ever need to. So now I'm going to come back to my brightness contrast and I don't need extra brightness. If anything, I need it to be a bit darker. So I'm gonna slide this to the left and then I can up my contrast to between those edges. And that gives me a really nice result and without making everything else thicker later on in Illustrator. So now that I'm happy with everything, I'm going to double click on my background to unlock it and just hit okay. And now I'm going to group all of these changes together so I always have them. So I'm clicking on the bottom layer, holding shift and clicking on the top layer. So these are all selected. And now I wanna group them. That's command G or control G on a PC. And that just puts them in a group. And now I wanna make a copy of this group that I can work with. So I'm gonna hit alt or option if you're on a Mac click and drag and that will duplicate my group. I'm going to turn off this bottom group that way I've always got it in the future if I need to change this but now I'm going to flatten this group so I can copy everything and bring it into Illustrator. So I'm going to right click merge group and now everything is flattened together. 
Now I'm going to hit Command A or Control A on a PC, and that's going to select everything. You can see the little dancing ants along the edges, and then you want to copy everything. So Command C or Control C on a PC, come back into Illustrator, and let me zoom out so I can paste it in. Command V or Control V to paste, and now we've got it all pasted in here. I'm going to reduce the size of this so we can keep it on screen. All right. So now we've got a much better result that's high contrast that we can use for our trace. So now I'm going to hit image trace again, hit OK. Now it's going to run the trace and you can see how perfectly it applied that trace without me having to adjust anything in a very extreme manner over here. So I can make my pads just a little thicker if I, or my outlines a little bit thicker if I'd like to. I can make my pads a little smoother, my corners a little bit crisper. Um, I can do all the same exact settings that we did before, but just for time, um, we're going to roll with what we've got. So I'm going to hit ignore white again and then hit expand to commit our changes. And you can see that bounding box went around it. Command shift G to ungroup. And now I can close my image trace and everything. Let's ungroup it one more time. Sometimes you got to do it more than once. And now we're all good to go. So now I want to just take you through really quickly how I adjust my letters and kind of clean them up. So we're going to find an area that's a little rough. So let's look at the side of this B a little bumpy. And if we want it to be super smooth, you've got a few different options that you can use. So I, one of my personal preferences is the pencil tool. If you're a pen tool pro, by all means, go ahead and fix those points and get your points perfect. Um, but for a lot of people that are just beginning, you want really beautiful letters, but the pen tool can be very overwhelming. So the pencil tool is a really, really great option. So I'm going to select my character that I want to adjust right here. I'm going to hit the N key on my keyboard. That's the shortcut key for your pencil tool. And if I double click on it, you can get my settings. These are just the default settings in Illustrator. I haven't done anything to them. So if you haven't changed your pencil tool settings in the past, then you're already good to go. You're using the same settings I am. So I'll, all I'm going to do is with it selected, you have to begin along the path and finish along the same path in order for this to work. So this blue edge right here is your path. Let's see if I can zoom in closer. All right. Hopefully you guys can see that really well. And what I'm going to do is just begin along this path. So click and then drag with my pencil to clean this up and then finish along the path. And you can see how that smoothed that area out. If you have a Wacom tablet or if you're using AstroPad and on, on an iPad to mirror your screen, I love using AstroPad for this process. It makes it super fast for me. And then I'm able to come in and just do some last minute details with my pen tool later on. But this makes it clean up really easy, especially if you're a beginner in Illustrator. You can clean up these edges and you don't have that pressure of having everything perfect with the pen tool. And especially because it's hand lettering, there's that charm about it being hand lettered and not perfect anyway. So it really takes the pressure off of um, getting all those points perfect. So uh, that, Peter, it's, it's weirdly really satisfying to watch as well. Yeah. Okay. There, like, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's really fun because then you look back and you see how everything got cleaned up from start to finish. You could even retrace it later on and compare the before and after. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So another um, really great tool for cleaning up or just smoothing out areas that are a bit rougher is your smooth tool. It's found underneath your pencil tool. So in your toolbox over here, if you just click and hold on the pencil tool, you can toggle down to your smooth tool. And this is a circle and you can just come in and smooth it out if you'd like. And that just kind of straightens up your lines and reduces your points if you need to. So Smooth Tool also works really well. So the last um, tool is your pen tool, but I'm gonna show you how to use it in a way that's not scary. So your pen tool is right here. And, oh, that's not your curve. That's not your pen tool. Your pen tool is your keyboard shortcut P. And you can see right here, we've got our pen tool, our add anchor point tool, delete anchor point tool, and anchor point tool. So what we're going to use is the delete anchor point tool and the anchor point tool right here. Those are the two important ones that you want to use when you're cleaning everything up. We're also going to be using our direct select tool. So just keep things super simple. We're going to start with our delete anchor point tool. It's also a keyboard shortcut hyphen. Um, once you get used to the keyboard shortcuts, you'll use them all the time and it makes your work super fast. So if you have any extraneous points that you don't need, like I definitely don't need this point right here. It's not really doing anything for me. I can just go in with my delete anchor point tool and just get rid of it. So this really helps clean up those edges as well as you're going through. I don't need that one either. And you can see how clean everything is getting just by deleting some anchor points. So the other tool is your direct select tool, which is your open arrow tool. 
tool and you can get to that by hitting A on your keyboard. And this adjusts the handles. These little guys right here are your handles and this is your anchor. So if I click on an anchor, you can see it's every anchor has two handles. And sometimes they move independent of each other and sometimes they move together. So if I grab this handle, you can see it moves independent of my point. And Sometimes that's great and other times it's not super great. So right here you can see these two handles move together, which makes it really nice to keep things really smooth. When they move independent of each other, you get these really hard lines, which are nice for your corners where your path changes direction. But on the top of a curve, we really don't want this little bump right here. It's not doing anything for us. So um, in order to, Tila, yeah. um, do you have any control over which ones move independently and which ones affect both sides? I, I, I feel that might be coming next. <laughs> I, I feel the option Maybe. for how to turn one to the other might just be coming. <laughs> when, you, when you image trace, there's no control over it. It's no. just kind of whatever Illustrator deems they should be. Um, but then you can change them to whatever you'd like later on. So because these aren't moving together right now and I want them to move together, if I grab my anchor point tool right here, it's also shift C. All I have to do is click on my anchor. This part's really important. You have to click on your anchor point and then click and pull. And when you do that, now they move together. And if I return to my direct select tool by hitting A on my keyboard, now when I move them, they move together. And if I have them moving together and I don't want them to move together, just return back to your anchor point tool, shift C, and now you can move them independently again. But in order to get them to move together, you have to come back in and I think this is like a, a massively crucial top tip for anyone who uses Illustrator, knowing it's that- It's so actually, helpful. It, it yeah. Really is. Really. I remember when I first learned how to do this and I was like, what? Yeah, me too. <laughs> right, isn't it? it's, oh, learning, sure. learning Illustrator, I think it's just one of the best things ever as a designer. It's uh, so oh, much it's so powerful. It yeah. really is, isn't it? Yeah. See, this yeah. is really embarrassing and you probably didn't know this about me, Tila, but I have always lived in Photoshop. I never learned Illustrator because um, I did web design and stuff, so I didn't need yeah, it so yeah. much. But it's really frustrating now, especially given what we do. Like Matt's an illustrator expert. So many people we work with, yeah, are, it. it looks amazing, but I'm one of these people where it's just like a little bit scary to me because I've just lived and breathed Photoshop. I know that inside out and it's just oh, kind of yeah. alien. And now I, I don't have time to learn it. It, used, it so. used to suck my time though, because I'd do web design and it'd be like, oh yeah, I just need an icon. And then rather than going off to a resource place and buying some, I'd just make it because I couldn't resist it. I'd be like, oh, I'll just quickly make an icon in Illustrator. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you yeah. can do lots of that stuff in Photoshop now too. As well. It's pretty cool. Once you realize how powerful Illustrator yeah, can really, really be powerful. for you, especially with um, your lettering, because if it's whether or not you want to reproduce this and put this on greeting cards or cards or for clients, logos, you should always be yeah. creating logos in Illustrator. That way your client always has the option to make it as big. Like if they want to put it on a billboard and you made it in Photoshop, you're going to have to recreate it at the largest size it'll ever need to be created yeah. at, which is a pain, you know, to have to redo all of that work again. And whereas yeah. if you create it in Illustrator, you just scale it up and hand it to the client. You could even give them a regular Illustrator file and the printer can scale it up because, yeah. it, you know, with the points, it's amazing. So, yeah, for me with font making, it, the whole point of vectorizing is so your letters can look the same at eight points or at 80 points. Uh -huh. So it's really amazing, um, these points to just scale indefinitely, it's really cool. So that's just a quick overview of how to clean up your letters. That's what I do. I come in, I kind of smooth everything out with my pencil tool the way that I, I like it. And then I'll come in with the pen tool, this anchor point tool and the direct select tool and kind of change up my points so I can see what I like. And we can already see just that little bit of work and look at how smooth that edge of the B is. Um, so yeah, you can just spend an afternoon and just crank it out, put your favorite TV show or your music on and you just work. True. It's awesome. It's super therapeutic if you're into this kind of thing. Brilliant. So yeah, that is um, that's how to that's how I vectorize um, lettering and Illustrator with a little workaround if your lettering isn't as high contrast. So I love it. Really, yeah. really useful. Yeah, really useful. Really, really top tips for anyone who's just yeah getting getting out started in Illustrator. And as as you say, it's such a powerful package. Uh, and lots of people do just use Photoshop so heavily and never dip into Illustrator, but for any sort of designer or who anyone who wants to do commercial design, as you say, it's so important um, yeah. to create all the artwork that you want to scale to any size in Illustrator so that you can give it to your clients and then but you're not restricted for by, sure. um, yeah, by resolution at all, which is yeah. awesome. All right, yeah. I will come back and see you guys. Uh, back in the room with us. All right, yeah. um, there we go. I feel like you could have easily made that stretch an hour. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you really packed in the value there. So yeah, um, you did. Yeah, Jay said great tips, Tila. Totally oh, agree. Awesome. Uh, 
um, and Carissa finds it super calming as well. The cat says illustrator is literally my wife. Thanks for the, <laughs> the tips. Um, so Tila, as we do have a bit more time available with you, which you've been so generous with, I think everyone watching live right now should fire as many questions as possible. That would be awesome. Tila. Sure. And uh, <laughs> just to put you on the spot. Yeah, um, no problem. I'm open to right a very established, fantastic educator. You've got all of your courses, your YouTube, all the materials on your website. So I think getting this one on one access with you is a real opportunity and people should take advantage. And if they don't, Matt and I are just going to fire a billion questions at you. Absolutely. <laughs> that's cool. Thank you, yeah. Thank, thank you as well, Tila. So, so that's great already. Yeah, so um, definitely um, definitely use the ask a question box, by the way. If you see just below this video, click there and you can leave your questions and we'll try and get through everyone. But I guess my first question would be, are there any um, really common mistakes that you see people making when they're, they're doing this process and trying to create vector lettering? Um, I mean, you can, the really nice benefit of having that automated portion of um, it, tracing your characters is that it's automated and it's already done for you. So as long as you're fine with that, you already know how to vectorize. It's going in and cleaning up your characters. I would say the biggest issue is just people not taking the time to clean up your letters because now that um, a lot of people vectorize their lettering, it's really obvious when you don't do anything more to your right. letters. When you right, just yeah. leave it as the default, you can see those really hard edges and they're for someone who has a more detailed eye, they're gonna notice it and they're gonna see that you didn't take the time. And it really shows that you care about your artwork when you go in and you spend that extra time. To sure. it must elevate it to the next level, I guess. Totally, and it's yeah, so I mean, noticeable because those hard edges, they just mm -hmm. grab your eye immediately. So that would be my biggest recommendation is if you choose to vectorize, please take the extra time. Even if it's a quick thing, even if you go in quickly along your paths with your pencil tool, even that is more worth it than just leaving it as the default. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and as well um, as vectorizing and working in Illustrator, what about lettering in general? Because you've done a lot of that over the past few years. Are there any common pitfalls that people are hitting that they should be aware of um, where, you know, a few tweaks could really lift their lettering? Totally. Yeah. So my biggest recommendation is obviously, I mean, a lot of people already know with the faux calligraphy look um, of creating your thick downstrokes and your thin upstrokes. That's really great. And it can really elevate your, your lettering just by doing that much. But the taking it a step further and making it look that much more professional and polished is really practicing making those thick downstrokes consistent throughout all of your letters. So wherever you're applying that thickness to your downstrokes, make sure that thickness is the exact same for all of your characters that you apply that to. Same thing with your upstrokes. The thinnest parts of your character should be the thinnest, most, con it should be consistently thin, that same thinness across all mm -hmm. of your parts where you have that same upstroke. So yeah, that's the biggest issue I see with new letters. Sure. It's so just consistency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've we, we so had here that um, yeah. in terms of hand, hand lettering, that consistency and lettering in general is just really key to creating a professional font uh, and we, yeah. we find it as well don't we when we're reviewing fonts this end that the, the, just yeah. the consistency between letters is is so important and so the eye can just you know run along them nicely totally yeah, yeah. It, you will really take your lettering so much further and it does yeah. take time and practice you know you can just practice doing downstrokes over and over and over again with your thickness yeah, yeah. You so you can really get used to what it feels like when you're making that downstroke yeah, and then also, yeah. you know you're building muscle memory and when you mm. do it again your muscle is just going to remember it and it's just going to get better and better i think it was ian barnard actually on one of these weekly hangouts where he uh, zoomed in on his own lettering and he used a circle and put one side circle over yes that's a great the, uh, the yeah. thick Parts nice. and a smaller circle mm. over the thin parts, and you just made sure it was exactly the size of that circle. Yep, you can do that with any shape. You just that's a great, great tip. Um, cool. It's a great way to keep track of your letters as you're creating yeah. them. Cool. Especially so, um, if you're creating them in Illustrator from scratch. Yeah. Or if sure. you're editing them later on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it looks like we got a bunch of questions, Tila. We oh, might good. have to actually go uh, rapid fire here. So sure. um, do pop them in the ask a question bit, but I'm going to read out a couple that are in the main chat. Um, but if you put, put them in the ask a question bit, we'll be able to get to them easier. So Jay says, um, I wonder, does this technique work for letters drawn with fine tip pens or is it too little contrast? Um, do you recommend using more thick lines by default? 
Um, it's totally personal preference. If you're using a fine tip pen, you just want to make sure that you're getting that contrast. Um, I've noticed that with fine tip pens, you will have more time cleaning up um, later on because it does illustrator with the thinness. Um, the default is a little janky. So you will have to go in and spend a bit more time with your more fine tip um, pen lines. Yeah. Um, but you can totally do that. You don't by any means have to do the thick lines at all. Awesome. And uh, Natalie asks, when do you use the curvature tool? I actually never use the curvature tool. <laughs> and I've survived as a graphic designer, so there's no pressure there. I, ju I just don't use it. I don't need to. Amazing. So take it away, Matt. We've got someone here. Right. Okay. So is that, well, I said it's, I know it's a little bit over the subject, but how could, could you tell us how do you put together the font after you vectorize the characters? Sure. So an entirely new tutorial here. Um, yeah, <laughs> but, we do uh, have an entire course on this, but yeah, like yeah. The, the cliff notes for us. If we could sure, summarize. sure. Um, so once you have it all vectorized in Illustrator, you're going to, oh, actually, can I um, jump back on my screen? I want to show one other you thing. You know, I was thinking this as well earlier on, to be honest with you. Yeah, so I, I, I had this at the back of my mind. I was like, can I, am I allowed to answer this? this sure. Yeah. Everyone wants to know this. Everyone wants okay, to know. Great. Yeah, this awesome. one, so we'll it? come back in here. You can see I've kind of done a lowercase um, alphabet right here. And what you want to do when you're creating a font is you want to make sure all of your letters are separate first. So if you've drawn them all out like I have, it's it looks more natural when they connect. Um, here's another really good tip. Um, when you're creating letters for your font, what I tell my students to do is to grab the, your capital A and just write out any word that starts with an A, so apple, and then do the same thing with a B. So capital B, banana. Capital C, California, you know, just whatever comes to your head first and you go through the whole alphabet. That way you get a ton of different letters and then you can pick and choose which letters you want to use for your font. And it's more natural that way because you're writing it as if you're just, you know, writing different words. So it, it comes out a little bit na more natural than just writing out the whole alphabet um, because then you have all those unique connections with different letters pairing with other letters. So that's one of my biggest tips um, when it comes to font making or just preparing your letters for font making. But once you do that, you'll have all of your letters connected like this, especially if it's a script. So a nice tip without removing anything else that you've done is select your letters and then you can just hit shift E for your eraser tool and you can just erase away part of your vectors, kind of like in Photoshop. So once you do that, then you can um, come in. If I hit V on my keyboard to return to my arrow point, my selection tool, now this is separate. It's no longer connected or grouped with the original. So then I can come in here with my pencil tool and just, you know, naturally finish off the end of my K. So you can just come through. Same thing with your L. You can fix that side. You can use your direct select tool or your pencil tool, smooth tool, all those tools. Um, and then I can separate these ones. I'm just coming in right here. And you can change the size of your um, eraser tool by hitting the open bracket key on your keyboard. You can make it bigger by hitting the close bracket key on your keyboard. So that's also pretty helpful. Um, and you can just come through and do that for all of your letters. And that way they're separated and it's really easy to go in afterwards and just finish off their ends. So once you have all of your letters prepared in Illustrator, then you wanna bring them into your font software for whatever you use. I recommend Glyphs for Mac users. There's a mini, which is kind of a light version of their full software, which is the full version of Glyphs. So I use the full version. The main difference between Glyphs Mini and the full version is that the full version allows you a code editor. So you can program in contextual and stylistic alternates. I've got a tutorial on that if you want to look what, up what those are. Um, you can program in your ligatures and all kinds of extras with those. Um, with Glyphs Mini, you can't do that, but you can still make a fully working professional multilingual font. Um, so that's if you're a Mac user. If you're a PC user, I recommend the software um, font creator. So those are my preferences. I always get asked um, why I don't recommend Font Self, which I'm sure like maybe some of the people in the chat are wondering too. I don't use Font Self because it's another one of those automated um, products. And it's totally fine if you want to create a personal font, but I recommend using professional font software to create fonts that you plan to sell because then you know exactly how they're built. Um, you know the ins and outs of your font then. And your reputation is everything when you begin selling fonts and you really want to be able to to um, respond to buyers and help them out if they ever need any kind of support. And you can do that the best way when you know exactly how your font was built and programmed and that's best accomplished with professional font software. So that's my little spiel on that. But from Illustrator, yeah. you just 
it makes complete sense. It does. And then it does. You can, um, space out your letters and you know work on. Does, all it, does this does this affect the natural spacing and flow erasing them out? Do you then elongate where you've actually erased it? If that makes sense. Um, it's totally up to you. I. Um, or does this one come up a bit? These are called your exit stems. Um, mm. So your exit stems, you can make them all consistent and all the same if you'd like, or you can vary them up depending on the look of that you're going for with your font. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, interesting. Really, I mean, really interesting. Um, asked and answered, I would say. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> with, okay. with a live demonstration. Yeah. I love it. Um, okay, we've got some more questions coming in. So we have a question from um kate this is a really good question that's actually good one, isn't it? she says um do you worry that if you clean up your letters too much they may lose the hand-drawn look totally yeah this was a discussion that we've had in mm -hmm. um, my font group on facebook we've talked about that a lot um with how far is too far because once you get going with it it's really hard to stop especially once you create everything really smooth and then you want that look to carry over mm -hmm. so that i i would say is just you just have to do it um it, it just takes some practice and you learn where your limits are um it's definitely a worry but if you have that in the back of your mind you're already ahead of the game um when you are going in and cleaning things up so just be aware of it. That's the first step. And the more you do it, the more you're going to realize where where you're going a little overboard and you need to pull it yeah. back a little bit. Awesome. Um, got another great question from Victoria in the chat saying, uh, awesome tips. I'm an overall fan of your website. So uh, a little compliment there. Uh, every day. Speaking of which, guys, if you see the shiny green button below this video, definitely open up on a, a new tab, Tila's website every Tuesday. It is a treasure trove of uh, educational resources and freebies and goodies. It's well worth checking out. Um, but yeah, Victoria asks, what do you do when you want to vectorize your watercolor letters but actually keep the transparency? Um, so that is a little tougher. Um, with transparency, you're actually gonna have to go in to your edges and reduce your opacity with those areas. There's really no getting around that because when you automatically vectorize your watercolors, you're going to get um, full opacity um, shapes all the way through there. So for that, I would not recommend doing that. I would recommend creating um, your watercolor lettering as large as you would need it. And if it isn't and you wanna use it anyway, you can bring it in um, as a larger resolution scan. So my printer scanner combo, which is super basic, um, it scans up to 600 DPI. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot a little bit of math at you guys. Hopefully you can follow along. Mm -hmm. um, so the print standard resolution is 300 DPI. 600 DPI, if you bring that in, say your artwork is two inches by two inches. And if you bring it in to Photoshop or whatever, if you scan it in at 600, you can then double the size, so four by four, and have the resolution. So then you bring it down to 300 and it's the equivalent of two inches by two inches at 600. So now you have a larger size that's still the print standard resolution. So hopefully that helps. Do you guys yeah. follow? Do you want me to repeat uh, it? No, I think so. I think my head exploded slightly. But so. Um, so even when you fix the resolution, though, is it a case where you just don't use auto trace and you don't use Illustrator? Like, do you have to work more in Photoshop to kind of get that SVG font? I was going to say, because you see people creating now these SVG fonts, don't you, which have the semi transparency, which is can be quite cool. Although I've heard there's some issues when it comes to print, if you want to use them. Yeah, with SVG fonts, unfortunately, they can only be used in Creative Cloud with Illustrator and Photoshop right now. So it, re it really limits your buyer pool um, mm -hmm. if you're a new font maker. So I actually recommend just doing standard fonts if you're just getting started. Um, you want to build your buyer base before you start outputting um, fonts that are can only be used for buyers that have access to Adobe um, Illustrator, Photoshop, Creative Cloud. So that's cool. the first thing. Um, so for those, you wanna stick in Photoshop um, to create that kind of transparency right there. So that would be my recommendation. That's so that's why when you're scanning, you can get a larger size out of it if you're bringing it into Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Illustrator cool. doesn't matter because once it's vectorized, you can you know make it as big as you want. So you don't have to worry about really what size you scan it in at. Sure. Also another bonus of Illustrator. <laughs> we, we Big Illustrator it. fan over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, Matt, do you want to jump in with the next question? Um, sure. It says, how do you create consistency with lines and curves when creating non-hand-drawn style fonts? 
would love to see you create a character for a script font that's not hand drawn. That's a good question from Derek. Yeah. All right. Well, um, that would be more suited for um, people who are more comfortable with the pen tool because you'll be using that a lot more often. You could also do it with your pencil tool if you wanted to, if you're okay with that kind of inconsistency um, with your with your curves. So I I stick with um, hand drawn characters um, exclusively just because I love the look of them. Um, they really appeal to my own buyers and my own readers. Um, so that's what I stick to. But if that's something that you prefer and you are a pen tool pro, um, you can totally do that too. You can just um, create some guides. That would be my biggest recommendation. You can pull some guides in yeah. Illustrator and then just follow those guides um, to create your, your characters from there. You can even have, um, like if you have a font that you really love and you wanna use it as kind of a base or just some guidelines, you can type that out, put it on its own layer, lock that layer, but re reduce the opacity of it. So you've kind of got it as a template and then you can follow that along and just create sure. your own script off of that. Yeah. Uh, so that could be really helpful if you're just getting yeah, started. You see, you do see see a lot of fonts which were heavily inspired by other fonts. Yeah, definitely. you want to be careful with, yeah, yeah. Definitely. this is more of like a practice, yeah. you you yeah. get your basics down, you learn where your guidelines are and how to draw yeah. your basic yeah. forms. But yeah, by all means, do not output anything that's too, yeah. <laughs> not cool, no. don't do that. Uh, uh, Angela just showed up and said, uh, hello, I almost missed my favorite teacher in the entire world. Oh, that's so Angela. kind, oh, Angela, I'm, I'm glad that I could be here for you. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you got a lot of love in the comments today, too. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I can't believe I nearly forgot my favorite bit of these calls. But can everyone leave a quick comment with a single emoji as their response to what they've learned so far today? And this is where I really enjoy seeing like the screaming cats and that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, and Angelina says she loved me three times, so that's nice. Aww. You're getting the love, all the love there. There we go. Oh, awesome, <laughs> guys. And Derek said, yeah, he uses similar techniques to what you just outlined. Wasn't sure if it's the best approach. Um, oh, cool. But appreciates you answering the yeah, question. Yeah, tried and true, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I've been using right. it for, gosh, 10 years, probably more. Um, totally works. There we go. Well, I told you there's a bit of a delay, Tila, but the emojis are coming in. Keep them coming, guys. What oh, emoji cool. describes your feelings about what you're learning so far? It's so, mostly big hearts currently. We're yeah. getting a lot of love. A, lot, a, lot, a, lot, a geeky yeah. one as well from Maria. Yeah, yeah. That. yeah. Um, got the pen tour. Tila is pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting some Scotty Russell vibes from that comment. <laughs> Just pizza being something that pleases every everyone. <laughs> um, all the love hearts and love heart eyes from Dana. Yeah. This is cool. Keep them coming, guys. <laughs> Carissa there with the dancing girls. Nice. Um, okay, let's go Ooh, straight to the next question uh we have got uh isa says um any tips for vectorizing straight out procreate oh yes um so when you're working in procreate make sure that you are drawing in black that's the biggest helpful tip that i can give um so you want it to you want to create all of your lettering on black you want to make sure it's a white background so if you're using guidelines i have um some free procreate guides on my website if you want to um, download those you can use those as a base and you just want to have those on a separate layer and turn those off when you export so i recommend exporting as a jpeg you can export as a png if you want um but i always export as a JPEG, it's a bit smaller of a file. So I'll export it as a JPEG. And then if you're on a PC, you can just email it to yourself and open it in your email, download it, and then bring it into Illustrator. If you're on a Mac, you can just airdrop it straight to your Mac um, and then bring it into Illustrator and vectorize from there. And then it's already black, black and white, and it's perfect and ready to go. And you don't have to worry about a scanner at all. I do want to mention one other thing. Um, so I scanned in on my scanner. Um, if you don't have access to a scanner, there's an app called Scanner Pro. I think it's a couple bucks. Um, so if you need to scan your artwork in and you've created it by hand and you don't want to buy a scanner right away for this, um, Scanner Pro, that's the name of the app. And it's, it's essentially taking a picture of your artwork, but it automatically um, does that high contrast black white adjustment. So even if it's, you know, pencil, it'll do its best. Um, it kind of looks like you photocopied it. And then you can just bring it right into your computer um, and it looks like a scan. The only downside of that, so I always recommend using a scanner if you have one, Scanner Pro is like, 
use that if you have to use it. Um, it's just because when you're lining everything up, you can tilt it a little bit and it'll skew your letters and you won't even realize that you're doing that. Um, but it's it's an option, you know, if you want, if you have hand-drawn artwork and you don't have access to a scanner. Cool. Maria asked an interesting question, which is um, where do you draw your inspiration from? Oh man, that's a tough one. one. Yeah. Yeah, so I have dozens of type books. Um, I love the internet, as does everybody, but it's really nice to get away from the internet when you are trying to draw inspiration, especially for products that you plan to sell, um, in my opinion, because you, it's it's nice to not be too influenced by your competitors or what other people are doing. It's nice to draw inspiration, but know when you need a break from it and to look at you know, I like the old school types of um, type books and even some of the new ones are really, really helpful. Um, and you can just look through those and draw inspiration from those. So I have a, I have so many like dog-eared type books um, at home that I really I draw a lot of inspiration. On the, uh, on, yeah, yeah I don't know if you can see behind here, us. which are mine from back in the day, which are exactly the same. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah, so that's really helpful. So I would just yeah. recommend, you know, getting away from the computer. It's nice to to you know get exposed to it it's, you know you want to keep up on yeah, with print what's going on, but get away mm -hmm. from it too yeah it really is um got another question from uh john that says how did you learn to draw elements like flowers and flourishes so consistently mm. how did you oh, learn man. Yeah. <laughs> lots of practice i um yeah it's the ipad changed a lot for me because it allowed me to just doodle when i'm in the living room and you know, watching TV at night, I always have the iPad in my lap and I'm just doodling and practicing and, you know, looking at everything and um, using different uh, brush pens and pens. I love art supplies. So I'm always trying different things um, and working my best to be as consistent as possible because consistency is really the name of the game when it comes to lettering. Um, even if you have unique hand done styles, you still need consistency in certain areas of it to make it look professional and polished. So yeah, it's just lots of lots of practice. <laughs> no shortcuts. No, no. no, no. no. Um, Jesse asked as well, um, have you got any book recommendations? Oh, yeah. One of my favorites right now is um, the Scripps book by, um, who is that, Louis Feely and Stephen Heller. That one's a really solid one. They've got a, there's a type sketchbooks that I really like. Um, there's a series that goes with the Scripps. And I've got all of those books. There's a 3D one. Oh. Um, what was the other one? I can't remember the other one, but yeah, those books um, are solid. Speaking of 3D, I've got a random book recommendation myself. <laughs> <laughs> the Star Wars Pop-Up Guide to the Galaxy. And I have to mention this because we get so many comments when we do the videos about it. Look at this. Isn't that great? Oh, man. That's 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 one of my secret senses, I believe. Yeah, I got it yeah, yeah. from that for Christmas. There we go. But yeah, the, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need to do the. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to make it a bit finally, more realistic. Finally, we're finally revealing you. what's what's inside. That's awesome. There we go. Someone had to make that. Like someone had to. Oh, it's incredible, it. isn't it? Yeah, he's like this world famous. Yeah, uh, yeah. Look at the state of this. Absolutely he's like this world famous uh, pop up artist. Crazy. Yeah. There we go. That's like a whole different side of the brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even know where to start. No. no. <laughs> Um, cool. Has anyone got any final questions? I think we've got time for one or two more. We have. And Matt, while we wait for the lovely uh, viewers, have you got any other questions? Oh, how did you get started off? What was what was your first inspiration for this? Because obviously, when as a as a designer, there's so many different paths you could go down. So what what drew you down? With lettering? Yeah, yeah. Because oh, it's very, always... very popular. You know? I've always been into lettering. I remember my sisters would, would vouch for me. Um, we were yeah. little and I would be at the kitchen table and I'd just be like writing my name over and over again. My mom was a teacher. And um, so I guess part of me just trying to imitate her, I would make yeah. my own class list. So I'd make up a bunch of names just so I could write a bunch of different names in different ways. Um, so I've been like writing just experimenting with my handwriting. I would always ask my parents for every birthday and every holiday, I want a craft book, I want an art book, I want a calligraphy book. Um, I was just always so drawn. And in elementary school where they would give us certificates for certain achievements, um, there was a lady that just did calligraphy for everybody's names and I was so jealous. And I would look mm -hmm. at my certificate and try and trace over it. Um, so it's always been a huge passion of mine, but I didn't know what I would do with it. I just love doing it on my own. And then, 
gosh, I can't remember the year. I want to say it was like 2011. I went to the National Stationery Show in New York City. And I was super inspired by all the hand lettering that started appearing on stationery. So then I was like, oh, well, there's there's something I could do with lettering. So I it got the wheels turning, like, what can I do with this? I just love doing it. And I didn't know what I would end up doing with it. Um, I started doing, I started introducing some of it to my freelance clients and that worked out really well, but freelance wasn't my thing. I just, mm. it works for people. It just wasn't. Were you wasn't. doing graphic design beforehand then or? Yeah, I was, um, yeah, yeah. so I graduated college in um, 2008 with a graphic design degree. So I was very in the trenches of doing design every single day and just doing lettering at night for me. Um, and then once fonts started getting popular, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to teach myself how to make a font. And there's like no resource, resources out there, to yeah, learn, yeah. which is why I made the courses because it took me like a year just to figure out how to do it. Um, so then I just, you know, then I, it was like the light bulb moment where I just well, knew so. this is what I can do with my lettering. And it's just encouraged me to keep improving and practicing every day. Oh, that's fantastic. So nice to be able to turn your passion into your career. You know, it's so lucky. that's brilliant. Really yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good. Um, I guess then final question from me would be there's so many letterers out there and font creators out there yeah. now. Um, yeah. How do you stand out? How do you stand out? Man, yeah. that's a tough one. I think um, yeah. yeah, that is a tough one, but interesting. Yeah, for me, um, it's one of the most important parts is to avoid the comparison trap because that is so mm. easy. It's really easy to get overwhelmed um, and just intimidated and want to throw in the towel because especially when you're beginning, I love this quote, don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle or end. Mm -hmm. And it's really yeah. hard it's really hard not to do that, especially when you're just getting started and you're like, there's so much competition. I'm not good enough. It's too late for me to start. You have to really focus on yourself and, you know, nurturing your own skill set. If it's something you love, make sure you invest in yourself and spend time on it. Um, there's plenty of ways to stand out. You just need to figure out what makes you special. What can be your thing? What can you do better? It's, um, What's your unfair advantage? What do you? What can you do better that other people can't do as well? And the more you practice, the more you start seeing what is it that sets you apart. Or even if there's a, a group of people, they're going to be a smaller group of people than the masses. Like yeah. if you are really good with brush pens and that's just your bread and butter, you can do that better than everybody else can do it. Stick with that, you know, like embrace it and really push it as far as you can go. Um, if you're better at drawing an illustrator with the pen tool and not bringing in hand lettering that's been scanned, embrace that. Make the best um, pen created fonts that you can. It's just figuring out what can you do really well that sticks with you and that you love to do um, that maybe the masses aren't doing as that well. Lies as around your passion. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, really good. I think that's a. Um, a lovely note to end on and yeah, Kat, yeah she said so. what's your unfair advantage i love that and i need to ask myself that question more yes. i think we yeah, all do yeah excellent definitely um tilo thank you for yeah, being so giving so much, tilo. My pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me. let's yeah. uh in the comments guys let's blow up the comments showing some love and some thanks to tila for jumping on with us yeah, today and everyone that was brilliant. Here. thanks, thanks ever so much tila. Thank you. Thank you. really appreciate it i hope you had fun I did. Tons of fun. Thanks, guys. Good All right. Well, guys, as always, we'll, we'll see you same time next week for some more value on the weekly Hangouts. But, Tila, thank you again, and I will talk to you soon, no doubt. Sounds good. All right. Brilliant. Take care. Thanks, Tila. <laughs> Bye. Bye. And everyone go check out Tila's website. Link below the video. Go check it out. It's an incredible resource. Okay. Bye from us. Awesome. Bye. Bye.